I'll try to make it, uh, keep it brief. Um, good afternoon, everybody, just after 12. My name is uh, Rob Stekelenburg. I'm working for uh, Idegis in uh, the Netherlands, a software developer. Uh, Idegis is a small company in uh, the Netherlands, a geo company that has uh, clients among mainly the governmental organizations, provinces, councils, police, and we were once involved in a project, a national project, where we had to use tiling, but where uh, the map data was updated very regularly. And we had to meet and, and solve some challenges in that respect and develop special software to do what we wanted and to keep, uh, keep up with the goals of the program. The, oh, I'm going much too fast, sorry. Okay. The, uh, the Dutch government has a national facility for showing uh, spatial plans at all levels, council, uh, governmental, provincial, all kinds of uh, spatial plans that are useful for public, uh, public use uh, and professional use. And at the moment we have um, around 15,000 plans in the system and it's growing daily. It's really uh, taking off. It's publicly, publicly available through a website and besides the website, there are facilities for professional use as well. Uh, you see, every we have 15,000 plans. Every dot is is a plan, and it's almost the uh, uh, the view of the Netherlands uh, is coming out through all the small dots. Users have to be able to to zoom in to plans, to pan, and to zoom out. So we, uh, we need a, a good performance, uh, and that was one of the uh, demands that the project had. I show you an example, a plan, more in detail, from the hometown of our company, Reisen, in the east of the Netherlands. And the website gives uh, wonderful uh, uh, means of, of searching. Um, I just uh, found this plan in our, in our uh, town by, by typing in the address of our uh, company's uh, headquarters. And it's a small plan that t says something about how to develop the center of, of this town. All the documents that belong to it, all the official documents can be found as well. And this is a... a really common local plan, so to say. It's difficult to translate the specific items into, into English, into, uh, but I, 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 you can say this is a local plan, and each local plan has about four to five map layers, uh, including borders, including an overview layer. And these five layers uh, are used for the majority of plans in, the, uh, uh, in this facility, and they all uh, constitute the whole air service area of the Netherlands. Maybe a few percent of the total number of plans is different. They have often, uh, often have a, a larger service area. They are more in the national uh, area or the provincial areas of uh, spatial plans. And they have their own specific layers with them. And that, that makes one of the challenges in this case. The topography, the map of the town and surroundings that you see is pre-tiled because it changes maybe one a year, once a year or, or even less. So we do that on separate hardware. In this uh, spatial plans project, plans are updated daily because councils and everybody who is using it from the government uh, really wants to... Um, to be able to present the new data as soon as it is ready. So we have uh, from a few plans a day to a few hundred plans a day per, per day that are updated in the system and have to be uh, shown on the map as soon as possible. We provide for a number of zoom levels from the overview of the Netherlands up to the utmost detail of, of, a, of a certain plan. And we need to do that for different map layers as well. Most plans contain several layers, like the plan I just showed before, it contains five layers, 
and some of these uh, special plans contain 10 or more layers as well and uh, we have to provide for that in total we have uh, one no they said 700 map layers in the system that we have to uh, to provide to to users to give you an example of uh, how many tiles that could be for the topography layer, I have been counting uh, the number of tiles for the whole of the Netherlands for all these zoom levels. And that's for one layer only, five and a half million tiles. And we have uh, 700 layers in total. And this means that if we would not use tiling, it would result in high demand on the WEM. WMS, uh, because at the daytime the map server is also used by uh, professionals as well, and uh, it serves the, 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 the map data for the, for the website. So we had to come up with a solution, and we had to, uh, to use tiling to diminish the demand on the, on the services. But what we only wanted to do is tile parts of the layer that were changed. We can't uh, change the, the whole layers every time. And uh, the customer also had uh, said that, that they wanted to be ready with tiling before office hours. So there would not be any stress on the WMS during office hours. We came up with a solution that we call the tiling manager. Static data is uh, pre-tiled, like topography, and dynamic data, which, is, uh, which can change per day, is tiled before office hours. Uh, we use the web cache, which is a perfectly uh, sound uh, uh, solution for, for tiling, for static tiling, that is. So in this case, we're not smiling yet. We do need some, something extra. And that is the tiling manager, which sits be between it sits between the planned database of the uh, whole project and uh, the web cache. And it queries the planned database on a daily basis and then makes tasks that it can issue to the web cache. And we had to uh, change, to adapt the web cache as well, to be able to communicate it with it uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that we wanted and to, uh, to be able to monitor the progress of the web cache. We faced a number of challenges. As I said, the monitoring of GeoWebCache uh, was wanted, and we also wanted to be able to, to stop GeoWebCache, well, because a tiling manager can uh, get a command to stop everything it is doing at that moment. So it has to um, stop the GeoWebCache instance as well with the tasks at hand. And we had to uh, extend the REST interface of GeoWebCache. The tiling manager itself has a simple information page which shows uh, the plans at hand, all the layers per plan, the zoom level to which the layers have to be tiled, and during tiling it gives the percentage of uh, tiles ready and also an estimate of the time still to, uh, to expect the tiling will, uh, will need to, to go on. And because we have uh, several plans that, that have their own, their own layers, the GeoWebCache has a configuration file with the, all the, the map layers inside, and we only have five of these common layers that are common for a lot of plans. But there are some plans that use specific layers which we can't predict uh, beforehand. So we have to generate a configuration for GeoWebCache using a template and uh, the tiling manager knows about the plans, it knows the template, it fills in all the details and it makes uh, a proper uh, configuration for GeoWebCache that it needs. We also did some work on optimizing the uh, WMS performance uh, mainly by, by using some extra caching so that the, the database requests were uh, diminished, the number of them. And we um, also found it very handy to be able to shrink the PNGs that were produced, 24-bit PNGs to 8-bit using PNG quant, uh, which is a, a, a standalone program that we use for every child. 
and the transformation is also built into GeoWebCache. And that means that the, 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 um, I think the size of these tiles is indeed going from 100% to 50 or 30% uh, size. So it, it's really uh, helpful, helpful to uh, uh, get less uh, transport over the, uh, over the internet. And what was the that was that was that we had up to date tiles. So when a council changes a plan today and they upload it to the site, they really want the map and the view in the next day to be in order. We can't have old tiles uh, running around or, or still being there. Um, so up to date tiles was was very important and this was ensured by the cycle that we made, we built into the styling manager. We have the plan database and the tiling manager takes all the plans that were updated, deleted or, uh, uh, or added. It finds all the layers in all these plans. It makes for a task for each layer, a, a GeoWebCache task. And all these tasks are visible in the information page of the tiling manager. And the cycle starts with generating a new configuration. So for all the plans that we have in, in, in the morning, so to say, we generate a new configuration for GeoWebCache, up to date. Then we're going to truncate to delete all the tiles of the changed plans of the, of the, of the, the, the day before. So we erase the old situation, delete all the tiles that, uh, that were changed. Next, we send the new configuration that we generated here. We send it to GWebCache, and we reset GWebCache because we have to uh, make sure that GWebCache can read up this, this new configuration file. This was the most uh, safe uh, uh, option we had. Then after that, and GWebCache is back online, we give it uh, seed tasks, so it makes the tiles based on the new configuration and it makes tiles um, which represent the new plans and in, in the map later on. And all these uh, tasks in this info page are being uh, done bit by bit until the list is empty and then we're ready for the day and hopefully before office hours. A uh, small uh, idea about the architecture. There is one tiling manager, and there can be multiple GWEP cache, cache instances. And um, they can each run in, uh, they run in a Tomcat, and they can run all in the same Tomcat, or in a separate Tomcat, or on separate servers. Communication is via HTTP. So there is a uh, flexible way that you can deploy uh, the tiling manager and the GeoWebCache instances. You can have uh, many GeoWebCache instances if you want, but they all do get the same configuration. And the same configuration means that they all send their requests to the same uh, w WMS uh, to get and produce the tiles. Uh, the tiling manager is... Um, trying to find when it goes through its list, through the cycle and through the list of tasks, it finds a, a GWEB cache that is doing nothing at the moment and send a task to it so it can do the tiles for that plan, for that layer, and then finds the next GWEB cache that is uh, doing nothing and send another layer to that one and so forth. And if they're all busy, it just waits and monitors progress and waits until <coughs> one of these GWEB caches is free or the list of tasks is, uh, is empty and all that is configured in, in a properties file uh, for the tiling manager. It's a bit bad, well it's not readable really, but uh, uh, from a software perspective there is a tiling manager class that accepts HTTP requests from users, translates that into calls to a manager service and the manager service has a pool of, uh, uh, that holds uh, GW, no, GeoWebCache instances. 
In the pool, we have several GeoWeb caches um, representing GeoWeb caches, and, and the status of GeoWeb caches is also monitored in, in a special uh, class, in a special object. All, all is written in, in Java. Um, I think that is that. If I show a very short uh, overview over the database scheme, there is a table that uh, that contains the uh, the task, the, the cycle of uh, of the day, so to say, a row for the cycle of the day. There is a big table that contains all the status uh, um, items that are important for the for the task at hand, the the the, the plan, the layer type, the the zoom level we need to go to, etc. etc. Et et then there is a table that combines the type of plan with the layers that the plan is normally, um, uh, normally containing. And we have, for the pre-tiling, for, for example, when we want to pre-tile topography, uh, it may, does not make really sense to take the bounding box of the Netherlands because we would also tile a lot of uh, the North uh, Sea, which is not really useful. So we made a, a table with uh, seed boxes, uh, bounding boxes around in the Netherlands uh, in, in a uh, more um, uh, efficient way so that uh, most of the land of the Netherlands is covered that way. And the, the pre-tiling of topography and other layers is, uh, is a lot faster. Well, this is not readable also, but there is a configuration file where you can uh, really uh, adapt the number of GeoWeb caches, the connection to the, uh, to the database, uh, passwords for, for Tomcat, etc., etc. Et and I'm really going fast. This was it already. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Did you push your changes back upstream? Did you go I did, I did, and uh, that was but some time ago. Uh, and the commands were something like, uh, the, the, for example, the PNG 24-bit to 8-bit conversion. They didn't like the way we did it, and uh, for other items, they didn't um, take it up because they found that the classes we used, we adapted in GeoWebCache, would not be their choice of uh, of, of using uh, uh, our adaptations. So they didn't take um, our work, alas. No. Any other questions? I'm not sure that the, the, the talk will be uh, distributed sometime. Uh, or what we're asking all the presenters to do is upload it to ELO Geo. Yes, I will do so Thanks. because you have 10 seconds to write down this link. Okay, <laughs> I won't. I won't share it. I won't do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll upload it and. Uh, you can leave it up. You can leave it up. Okay. We've got plenty of time. Yes, but I don't. I really <laughs> had to go. I really had to go. <laughs> I have to catch a flight. Sorry. So E L O G O. The main. The main link is uh, www.idgs.nl. <laughs>